Hey guys, how's it going? Kermode here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at my track, What You Want, but specifically, I want to show you guys why I almost always now resample my basses uh, at the mix down stage of a song, even writing, um, and definitely post mix down if I haven't already done it. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first things first is simply going to be processing power. I just love bouncing things down so they're no longer inside a synthesizer so I can then add even more effects in more processing. It also just makes me commit to an idea, which I think as a musician, especially in electronic music where you can do anything you want, it really makes you just move forward, just move on, just keep going instead of getting stuck on idea. So that's number one, is just processing and committing. But really getting into it, the next main reason is manual fading. So I find side chain compression to be quite powerful uh, and to be quite useful. However, I find manually fading sounds out of the way can make songs and sounds so much tighter. So for example, let's take a look at this drop here. And let's just listen to the drums and bass so we can really get a sense of what's going on. So I've already bounced these. You can see, you know, side chain was working pretty well, but it's not perfect all the time. Uh, you can see there's a little click, for example, in the beginning of this sound, uh, likely due to the compressor taking too long to work. So manually going in and fading that out of the way is going to save you uh, a little bit of stuff going on. And then same here, you can see when the so uh, sound ends that there's this kind of weird little subby piece here to it. So with a sound like this, the manual fade can be so subtle uh, that you probably wouldn't hear it. And I doubt we'll hear it, but let's try. So get that in your head and now let's add a little fade on either end. Again, not too noticeable but it's gonna make a difference. Now, if we really shortened a sample with a little fade, you can hear the kind of tightness factor of things. And I'll shorten this sample too. I'm gonna to make it nice and tight. And let's listen to that. It's not how tight things start to feel. You're just clearing up that little bit of dead air. Let's check out this sound. You can see I did it. Little fades on the beginning and end. And if we didn't have those, let's see what that sounds like. You can see the bass reaches right until the kick drum hits. And it doesn't perfectly get out of the way, even though I side chained quite aggressively. Oh, it's just that like little bit tighter. Um, some examples of artists that I believe do this, I don't know for a fact, uh, are, uh, are Sultan and Tisaki. I find their bases have that just like little bit of dead air between each hit, like milliseconds of dead air. But I find that just makes things so much tighter. So that's number one. I love being able to go in and manually fade as many sounds as possible, even if it's just getting rid of little clicks and pops and just perfecting things that little bit more. I'm a big fan of it. Now, number two is phase alignment. Now, this I don't always do, and I didn't actually do for this song, but if I get really picky, I like to do it. Now, what is phase alignment? Phase alignment, and specifically what I'm referring to, is aligning either the sub and mid bass so that they are aligned, which just feels really good, or I even like to phase align the sub and my kick drum. So what would that look like? Well, what you would need to do is you need to set it up where you can see both of them visually on the same screen. Now, thankfully, this sound is quite heavily sidechained, but you can see there's definitely crossover between how long the kick is and how long the bass exists. Now, I should say, if you have any processing on your sound, 
after you do this, it's going to change the phase of the sound, uh, as in when it kind of occurs, because your computer has to process it, then output it, making this obsolete. This is really only the last step of your song once you're working 100% in audio. But if we were to, you know, kind of zoom in and look at the wave form of this sound, and let's assume or hope that I made it the same note as my kick drum. I usually try to make my kick drum the same note. Um, and as you can see, one cycle occurs about this often. So it kind of starts right here and ends right here. And if you look above, that's not the same as our kick drum. If we wanted that to align, uh, we would have to move our bass sound back a little bit to about here. So now we're getting an upward cycle. So we go up and down, which is the complete opposite of the kick. And then what we would want to do is actually phase invert the kick to align this one. So we go phase invert, phase invert. And you know if our kick is the same pitch as our bass, which it isn't, uh, then that will make a difference. Now, in this case, it doesn't actually matter that much because by the look of it, it's a different pitch. Um, so it wasn't too important. Though here you can still see this is kind of a downward cycle over the course of this one. So that phase alignment will kind of allow your kick and your bass drum to work together. Again, this situation, not as important, but when you're working with really clean subs and your kick drum is tuned pretty closely to the root note of your song, then I find this to be uh, a really useful technique. So phase alignment would be another reason for resampling your bases. And lastly, it's the ability to glitch, edit, and you know add pitch drops and transposition and transposition into sounds after the fact. So let's take a peek and maybe pick a point to do this. And let's uh, obviously reset this bass here. And let's hear everything in context. So that could be a good point. There's actually a piece of dead air right here. I could reuse a bass sound and totally mangle it to create something new. And that's actually pretty cool. I like that. Or this part here. Maybe at the end I want to do like a nice little stutter edit with the sound. Or maybe I want to do a nice pitch drop to it. So we go in, we transpose, we set the warping to be something nice. Get a nice little maybe octave pitch drop. Maybe here I'll add a little chop so these two parts of the basses feel separate. There we go, that's more unique than what was there previously. And then maybe on this part, This sound, to make it a little cooler, could have an edit in it. So you kind of see what I mean? It just gives you this ability to make your bases that little bit better. You can phase align, you can fade, you can cut, edit, reverse, pitch, more than you could when things were still in MIDI. And, la and as kind of fine little bonus, I like being able to just visually see the bases. For example, in this bass here, I can see that this kind of transient sound 
is a lot louder than the other chunks. So maybe what I'll do is I'll turn this one down or I'll turn the others up to match. Maybe I'll turn this little chunk up. I'll turn this little chunk up just a little bit. And actually maybe to make them stand out, we could add little fades between each one, making this little fill a little cleaner than that. A little louder, a little tighter. And these are all things that Honestly, I could have even done to this project to make it that much better. And I don't know, sometimes it's fun when you're not really feeling creative to just get really technical and finicky and edit and make your song that kind of 5% better, even like 2-3% better, but still better. So thanks again, guys. If you liked this, you can go support the song What You Want. Uh, it's off my Universe LP. I'll put it in the description, and uh, I'll be back again soon with another video. Thanks. Peace.